Hey guys, thank you for joining me again. We'll continue to walk through the book of James. Uh, we're in James chapter 2. We've been dealing with partiality. Uh, last week, just some very, very practical stuff about a, a wealthy man, a poor man coming into your, your gathering and how you treat them. You know, and we, we looked at that and uh, talked about that and we've talked about how favoritism is is not of God. And to guard my heart with that, I, I just got to be sure that I'm walking with Jesus, that that I'm abiding, that I'm living by faith, that I'm trusting him, that I'm living life under his authority. Uh, ever how you want to word it, walking in the spirit, ever how you want to word it, but that I'm allowing Jesus to be Jesus in and through my life. We're going to continue in that that same passage. I'm going to go down to verse 8, and I'm going to read verses 8 through 13 and just make a couple of comments to find a couple of terms for you as we just continue to walk through the book of James. All right, begin with verse 8. Uh, it says this. It says, If, however, you're fulfilling the royal law according to Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It says you're doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing a sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps, whoever keeps the whole law yet stumbles at one point, he's become guilty of them all. For he who said do not commit adultery also said do not commit murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you become a transgressor of the entire law. So speak and act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For the ju for judgment will be mercy merciless to the one who shows no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Wow. Uh, just a couple of terms that uh, I, I want to mention and define and then make a couple of comments. And uh, we'll finish this section of scripture. All right, the first one, he, he talks about sin, that, that you have committed a sin, that partiality is a sin. All right, remember what the word sin means. Uh, the word sin comes from a word that means to miss the mark, all right, to, to miss the mark that God has for my life, particularly here in dealing, in dealing with people. And, you know, if, if you're a hunter, you understand missing the mark, that it doesn't matter if you miss to the right or to the left. If you miss high or low, it don't matter. If you miss, you miss. But what sin does, it causes me to miss the mark that God has for my life, what God wants to do in and through my life. All right, and then it, it talks here about the royal law. All right, it says, uh, it talks about your neighbor. To, to treat your neighbor like you want to be treated. All right, which includes if your neighbor is wealthy or your neighbor is poor. All right, the, the royal law is that the way I want to be treated is the way that I need to treat that I need to treat people. Do I do that? All right, do I treat people the way I want to be treated, regardless of being rich or poor? You know, I, I've had the I've had the privilege to travel a bunch and to be in a lot of a lot of different places, a lot of different cultures, and and then one of the things that that you that you learn is that people are people, and people are in need of of Jesus, people are in need of being loved on, and uh, going into third world countries and just loving on people and hugging people that don't dress like me or, or they that they may be they may be dirty because they don't have access to running water or clean water, but just treating people like I want to be treated. How, how good am I with that? Am I letting God work in my life to the point that? I really don't see the circumstances. I don't see the the nice dress or the or the dirty dress. I just see people, and I see see them as a soul in need of the truth of the gospel. And just reminded in this passage, and I mentioned this before, that partiality, when it comes down to it, is sin. That partiality causes me to miss the mark that God has for my life. Therefore, I don't need to be partial. I don't need to show favoritism and i i would say that we all struggle with that we all battle with that because some people are just easier to love some people are easier to minister to some people are easier to love on and that's just part of life but viewing people through the lens of the gospel or viewing people through the lens of jesus uh 
learning to do that by surrendering my life to him and really letting Jesus be Jesus to me and understanding that partiality really is wrong and that 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 is sin and it it another principle would be to to miss one mark to miss one thing is to miss it all you know he makes mention here about about that if you if you miss part of the law you disobey part of the law you disobeyed it you disobeyed the whole the whole law that you may not commit adultery but if you commit murder what you've done is that you've broken the law you see, it's not about just getting one thing right. It's about letting Jesus radically transform my life, all of me. It's about me learning to live surrendered and really letting the Jesus in me be Jesus over every detail of my life. You know, and we all got areas that, that we struggle in that is really harder for us to really submit and surrender but the key is learning to submit and surrender all of me to him, learning to live in dependence upon him. You know, as I, as I look through scripture and the older I get and the more I see, the more I begin to understand that God allows me by his grace to see and to comprehend and understand is that this whole life is about coming to know Jesus and learning to live in total dependence upon him. Learning really to let Jesus be Jesus in all areas, every detail of my life. Uh, my, my marriage, my relationship with my kids, my family, my uh, church, relationship with people. And here specifically in dealing with those people that have a lot and those people that don't have much at all. That I really need to let him have control of me, of, of all of me. Because if I miss if I disobey one thing, I've missed it all, all right? That uh, I can't separate that stuff. And again, there's areas we struggle in more than others, but just re getting to the point that I realize the importance of us living a surrendered life. And the last thing I'll share today is the importance of mercy and that, that God has been extremely merciful to us and we need to extend mercy to other people. All right. No, God does not, in, in his mercy, does not give us what we deserve. Therefore, I need to be willing to show mercy to people. And I, I kind of think of it like this. I have received mer much, much mercy from a holy and a righteous God who did not have to extend mercy to me. And those who receive much mercy need to be willing to extend much mercy for the glory of God. So in my life, in dealing with people, here specifically, wealthy and poor, am I allowing God to extend mercy to people in and through my life? You know that partiality is a sin. It will cause me to miss the mark. Uh, I need to treat people like I want to be treated, empowered by God's presence in my life. If I break one law, I've broken them all. And I need to be willing to extend mercy mercy because God has extended much mercy to me. Go have a blessed day. Let Jesus be Jesus in you today and find someone you can extend mercy to because you have been given much, much mercy. Thank you so much for watching Completing Christ as we strive to teach you about the Christ life. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and may you have a blessed day walking with Jesus.